what he did, which is just great, and by the way, it's thrilling, thrilling to decode tea drops, tea and on. Did you check? They say that if we don't have kitties, that we might not be the authentic and real American intelligence media. Meow. We always have kitties. There's kitties all around here. The conclave is filled with kitties. So we, we don't do anything without kitties. So the point is, is that he's over there. And to get a chance to decode what he's doing is, in a way, tongue-in-cheek, of course, and it's reading between the lines. And so we just want to tell those people who are trusting the plan, don't trust the plan, or that the uh, that Sessions has been activated. Uh, no, Sessions has been deactivated. There's always been a plan. It's called Donald Trump is the plan. And so that's what we're working on. And if you really want the hot news straight from the White House, don't get it secondhand in riddles. Get it straight from his tweets. The first tweet reads, Just returned from France where much was accomplished in my meetings with world leaders. Never easy bringing up the fact that the U.S. must be treated fairly, which it hasn't. On both military and trade, we pay for large portions of other countries' military production. Excuse me, let me continue on. Uh, Hundreds of billions of dollars for the great privilege of losing hundreds of billions of dollars with these same countries on trade. I told them that this situation cannot continue. It is and always has been ridiculously unfair to the United States. The bottom line is he went over and he said, hey, I told you to pay and you haven't paid up. You've only paid half. I want the rest. And he said that to every person that he met there except for Putin, who in fact he was looking at Putin thinking the very thoughts that he just tweeted out there, which is, why, why do all these European nations think they need to defend themselves from Russia? Russia is no longer a major player, except in uranium but, manipulation. But, but if they don't have an enemy, then they don't have anybody to sell their weapons from, from the military industrial complex. So all they're trying to do is to keep customers on the playing field. And as we saw with Macron, Macron, I always have to remember Crone because he's married to a crone. So Mac- Hey, hey, don't you be talking about older women like that. She, is she even a woman or is she a robot? I mean, I can't tell. Uh, she, she's a Rothschild, isn't she? Uh, first off, she's not really quite human, and that's the reason that she's always hanging onto his hand. And did you notice that he, Macron, had to keep touching Trump to make sure that he wasn't in trouble and that he was nearby his master? But then he speaks at a meeting beforehand and says the stupidest things any person could possibly say. He said, Macron, that France might just get out of NATO's obligation with USA being their military uh arm and just go ahead and develop its own military. Okay, that's the stupidest thing you could ever say, except that migrants are good or that Paris isn't taken over by uh, the invasion or the other lies that he says all the time. I mean, are they still in economic uh, emergency? Are they still in military martial law? When did they end it? I didn't see that they ended it. So are they, France is a mess. Now, we went over there, and he's talking to all these uh, leaders. The only leader he didn't have any problem with was Putin, because Putin's very clear. Putin has said recently that no one, no world leader, unless they are insane, would ever push the red button to fire nuclear missiles. That's just not going to happen. He has clearly said he just wants to end them all. Russia, USSR, as it was dismantled, and its satellite uh, nations afterwards, have been amazingly effective at uh, dismantling these uh, tens of thousands of nuclear warheads. And so what he said to Putin was, um, you know, Angela Merkel is not going to be out until 2021 or 2020. And so we still have a problem with Nord Stream 1 and 2. Now, we're going to break their back with the sanctions on Iran because they're literally... Uh, that's the reason Germany got the money to be able to give $400 million in a third-person account to Iran to break the sanctions. This is what he's talking about. He's talking about the fact that the European Union, we're in a trade deficit with them. Why? Why would we be in a trade deficit with anyone? Think of that. That's just stupid. Any company you know is in a deficit with somebody on a regular basis? Well, well then course, that company doesn't exist anymore after a short while. Then. I know that you say that because you're talking at one level, but if you look at it in a, in a higher dimension, 
so to speak. The globalists have infiltrated every na national politics on the face of the earth, and they're running an operation where they're trying to take over the world. It's the globalists versus the nationalists. And these nationalists, which I am proud to say we are nationalists, we want to protect our sovereign nations against globalists. Now, the globalists hide in all kinds of forms, and they're sitting right there in France, and they're in Germany, they're in the United Kingdom, big time, and they're in the United States. And patriots are waking up to this, and we're starting to call these globalists out as they are. And Macron called himself out. He gave a speech where he said that Trump was wrong to speak of nationalism. There is no more nationalism. There's only patriotism. So then I ask you, Mr. Macron, who you obviously are about as intelligent as Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, I'd ask you a simple question. First off, where would you get the money for your military, seeing that your nation is basically bankrupt because of the invasion of uh, your enemy, who uh, less than 2% of them took work, so that means 98% of them are on your social system. That's the reason France is going to hell in a handbasket. But please tell me, President Macron, you say you're not a nationalist because there are no more nations, because the European Union has been preaching that to you because they preach George Soros open society nonsense. But then you say you're a patriot. A patriot of what? If you don't have a nation anymore, what are you a patriot of? A patriot of the European Union, which is now becoming more Muslim than Christian? And in five years, you just did, you yourself and your representatives from France all agreed the invasion of Europe is the end of all uh, nationalities and all nations and even the language that you and speak. And the cultures and their identity. I mean, this is what it, uh, what globalism will eventually do, but why I thought it was important that Macron call this out is that it tells us that the globalists are very concerned about patriots getting woke, so to speak, about their borders, culture, and language. So this is a great shout out to all patriots around the world to stand united to fight against the world's enemy, the globalist. Macron is a dummy sitting on the lap of a Rothschild handler. That's all he is. And when what, he opened, Mommy Macron? Yes, Mommy Macron. And and uh, Mommy Rothschild Macron. And what's every time he opens his mouth, he's like a baby bush. He sticks both feet in it. It's hard to believe that they're having a competition. Who's going to be more stupid as a world leader? Well, Trudeau you can't help it because or Macron. people have such low capacities and low IQ, you can't expect them to be a brilliant, stable geniuses like our leader is. For instance, President Macron, I'd like to ask you a question. Do you even know who the Atlantic Council is? Do you know that they're the propaganda arm of George Soros' open society? Do you know that they've taken over free speech in Europe and your internet is now no longer... It's actually run by the 10 agencies that are the truth ministry for George Soros, as well as a program that he developed, which has been brought to America and put on Facebook under the aegis and under now the control and watchful eye of the ex-assistant prime minister of Britain, Sir Nicholas Clegg, unbelievable the politics that are happening here folks so free speech isn't completely over in america so george soros sends his privy council member the ex prime minister assistant prime minister of britain has to come to end free speech through the same atlantic council nato nato's branch of propaganda is the atlantic council who sits on it the same people who started the dnc russian dossier alexandra chalupa Dmitry Alperovitch, George Soros, and all the other European Union globalists who are part of this. And they what probably have a satellite office in Broward County. <laughs> uh, there's no doubt that the FBI counterintelligence runs out of Broward County, and there's a good reason for that. Look who's next door. The richest people in America in in the in the county next door. What is that? Palm Beach, Palm Beach. County. Mm -hmm. That's the richest people in America. I used to go down and work with those people. That's you know they have compounds. They don't have homes there. You mean the yellow-bellied globalist pigs? That's them. Yeah. And unfortunately, I I would work for them. Our colors are red, white, and blue. That's the patriots of America. The globalists are nothing but washed-out yellow 
bellied cowards. They can't even fight their own battle. They send out people who are poor, who need money, pay them to be thugs on the street, and then they take people like disgusting Debbie Wasserman Schultz, probably have her blackmailed up to the gazoos as she's got others blackmailed, having her do the dirty work of winning elections by stuffing ballots. It's enough to make you sick. So from this point on, they are yellow-bellied globalist puppets, pigs, and thugs. Debbie Wasserman Schultz was probably responsible for the death of the attorney... Uh, Weissenot? Yes, Weissenot, mm-hmm. who was probably looking into Imran Awan's immigration papers, which, isn't it amazing? The, the Pakistani intelligence uh, leader, son, got into America on an immigration lottery and then set up the largest espionage system that we've ever seen in the Congress, except for what Israel always does. Now, don't get me started on that, but the Zionists are all the time. Right now with their stingrays, they are spying on every single telephone call, every single thing that happens in Washington. It's all going out just like Hillary Clinton's 780,000 emails where she sent a courtesy copy to the Chinese who were watching every single thing that she does. Isn't it funny that they can't find those emails, but yet they can find that many ballots in Broward County? Yes, and, and, and we will go there in a second. Now, Macron, I'm going to ask you this other question, and after this, you're going to have to go sit on your mommy's lap. Do you think that the migrants, as you call them, migrants mean they're going to work? And that they're migrating for to, to work, not that they're migrating for social systems. That's an invasion you have there. So you're, the invaders, are they patriotic, President Macron? And if they're patriotic, what nation are they patriotic to? Think of what you're saying. You are putting the noose around your neck, jumping off. Uh, this, this it's unbelievable what we're witnessing. So what had to happen when Trump went over there to begin with, with the NATO meeting? They all bowed and scraped and said they'd pay what they owe uh, from the past and they'll pay what they owe now and they'll start to buy their own equipment. And so huge amounts of money were paid. I assume that then it backed off because Angela Merkel, until she is out, we have someone who is a fascist on the level of Benito Mussolini, uh, Francesco Franco, uh, Angela Merkel will go down as being a fascist in history who is a George Soros puppet that was for globalism on a level that was basically selling out her own nation, all the nations of Europe, and that's what Trump was dealing with while he was there. And he's sitting there looking at Putin thinking, Putin would like to do a deal with everyone in this room. Every single person in that room with Trump and Putin, Putin wants to do a deal with him. So does Trump. Do either one of those two world powers want to blow each other up with nuclear bombs? Absolutely not. Not even conceivable. But that's what NATO is about. NATO, NATO is, a, is a form of globalism. It's I, a I keep worse form of globalism. Because I want people to break out of this paradigm of the Russia is the enemy. No, globalists are an enemy, and they would like us to think Russia is their enemy. And if you look at Macron and the election with Le Pen, I hope our patriot friends in France will wake up and pay attention to the uh, articles that we've been posting recently about how this election fraud, I know you're going to get to that, works because it affects European countries as well as the United States. This is a global election rigging scheme where no nation will be able to survive the globalist dictates of who will be their rulers. I want to explain, Betsy, that it isn't weapons that curtails Russia's uh, economic expansionism. But remember, if, if Russia wanted economic expansionism, it would simply take back all of its satellite nations. And has it done that? No. It works with them cooperatively and economically. And so what is going on? Trump is defeating Russia. Russia is on its knees right now. Why? Because of the Nord Stream 1 and 2 sanctions. And so Germany came in, broke those sanctions, and became the wealthiest nation in the European Union and lied to everybody. That's Angela Merkel. She brought in the invasion. Remember, she's the one who invited them all in. And they had to come in, not through her country, which I said all along, if she wants them, Bring them in through Hamburg through ships. No, she sent the ships out through Hamburg and then brought them into other nations to destroy them. It's economic chaos that George Soros is about. When he says Open Society Foundation or many other thousand names he has for that group, Open Society, uh, no, that's Open Borders. That means chaos. That means he can come in as an economic hawk, as an economic terrorist, 
and that's what he's done in Europe. And every nation that is not part of the European Union and part of the European Union Central Bank is being beat up, including Britain. They're going to have another vote, probably, because George Soros went over and messed with that election. And that's where we're going in a second. Those idiots sitting there in that room literally say, Russia interfered with our election. Can't prove a single speck of it. But because of that, they gave up their free speech to George Soros and his his truth ministry and the... Uh, Atlantic Council's uh, Digital Forensic Research Laboratory, oh, excuse me. Okay. That is the program that took away free speech from Europe and Britain and now is happening through Facebook and it's being piloted there to see if it can then go into all aspects of the internet. But you see, they can't really crush the internet because that's where commerce happens. So recently with the GDPR and Article 13 voted by Europe- European Union, it squelched the free activity of information being shared on the internet so bad that many companies will no longer do business with Europe. That was an economic attack greater than any NATO attack with weapons. And they weapons. did it to themselves. And they did it to themselves. And we, on the, and the same thing with the Nord Stream 1, that was Angela Merkel. That was an attack upon the, on Europe, her invasion, an attack upon Europe. That they're not paying their bill for Russia. Why would they even pay the bill for Russia? They know Russia's not going to harm them. Russia has trouble getting back a, a couple little uh, sections of Ukraine. Ru- uh, it's absurd to think that Russia is going to somehow take America. Stupid. China is who we are at war with. And Trump is at war with them. And he doesn't need NATO. And he doesn't need any alliances. And he doesn't need any treaties. And he doesn't need Turkey. Turkey wants to be in NATO. That would be the end of NATO. But, I, I mean, uh, on, a, on, on a more active level in terms of the central bank, yes, of course, Turkey is already part. But the point is, is that when you move across the Bosporus and you move into the Levant, you're lost. Because I would like to take for you the speech that Macron gave. It was the most insulting thing I have ever heard a world leader say, literally. It was unbelievable. Every word of it was worse than a lie. It was a Rothschild globalist wrapped in three lies lie in every single sentence that was so insulting he was spitting on America. Well, that shows you how a puppet works. The globalist wrote that speech and he had to deliver it. I don't even want to go into the details because he's not worth it. But that's what Trump had to confront over there. And over here in America, the stupidity of what he set everyone up to show rigged elections. His election was rigged, but because there was a tsunami for him, he became the president. He knew it was rigged. They tried to say he rigged it with the Russians. Now he's letting them all do their thing. And here's what's, we'll go there in just a second. But when we talk about these elections, remember, he's sitting there with a bunch of people who criminally do the same type of election rigging in their country. And if our CIA doesn't like the results, then we just simply say it's an invalid election. Any country in the world, I hope you all know that, America and the United Nations sends election officials to every major election that puts a world leader in power, and they do exit polls, and if the exit polls do not meet their standards, they declare it an illegal election. Who the heck are we to do that? Well, again, it's not American patriots that are doing it. It's the globalists in our government, these senior executive members, these circo people, the crown agents, the globalists that are in our government are creating this havoc around the world. It's the counterintelligence group of the CIA, the counterintelligence group of the FBI, the State Department's uh, group that works with national security and the uh, Department of Justice National Security Division, as well as the counterterrorism unit. It all comes down to counterintelligence. Now, intelligence, first off, when it comes to the military, is an oxymoron. I mean, look at Clapper. Intelligent? <laughs> please. Comey? Please. Intelligent? No. Those people are not intelligent. No, this is the best the intelligence communities have to offer. And the intelligence that they were giving Trump, that's the best they have to offer. Yeah, and and look at Brennan. Uh, Intelligent? No, these people are not intelligent. And so it's counterintelligence. And what is that? That was taught by the Jesuits who learned it from jihad, who learned it from pogrom, who who learned it from all the different ways to manipulate and conquer your enemy. And so it's subterfuge. It's lies. It's false. It's Peter Strzok. It's Lisa Page. It's Andrew McCabe. 
It's Bill Priestap. It's Bruce Orr. It's the same counterintelligence lying people. These are liars. That's all they do is lie. And so when we come down to making decisions for Trump from the White House, he may not even know what those counterintelligence groups are doing. They don't have to tell him. Well, to wrap up the uh, tweets regarding uh, international affairs, let's continue on. Uh, massive amounts of money spent on protecting other countries, and we get nothing but trade deficits and losses. It's time that these rich com- uh, countries either pay the United States for its great military protection or protect themselves. And trade must be made free and fair. Well, here's what's going to happen. We have bases all over the world. We're going to close those bases. If they're not paid for by other people, we're closing them. And as you, as you notice, Saudi Arabia, Iran, you know, they want nuclear power and nuclear weapons. And then now they want their own weapons and their own, you know. So they all want to be their own independent nations. Notice, that's not globalism. And notice then it's China, Russia, and America, uh, Britain, and uh, France selling those weapons and those nuclear uh power plants, nuclear materials, to these uh, foreign nations who are, in fact, empowering them to be our more effective enemy. But what is really going to happen? Because Obama had dismantled our military, he had, in fact, literally used up all of our bombs at one point. We had to make all new bombs. Uh, That's all he ever did was bomb, 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 bomb. He bombed more than any other president. He was at war bombing Five to seven nations through every single day of his presidency. Right. That's why we call him Obama. Obama. Now, Obama depleted everything. He fired more top admirals, generals, and top officials than anyone in history. He absolutely dismantled the military so that it could be taken over by the UN, and he brought in UN forces and particularly their equipment during Jade Helm 2015 and the Strong Cities Initiative, and that's to take away all of our weapons in America as those exact same units and equipment have done in other nations. And so what Trump is going to do is he's going to pull back the military. He keeps warning them, pay up your bill, okay? You can't even pay up your bill. So I'm not giving you any credit in the future, so I'm backing out. Why? Because guess what? Really, North Korea is not our enemy. Guess what? Russia is not our enemy. We don't need NATO. And the people who are our real enemies, we're not going to bomb them. We're going to go after them with economic sanctions. We're going to manipulate them into getting on their knees and begging for us to lift the sanctions. We control the economy of the world, the currency of the world, and anybody who thinks well, otherwise has not looked at the statistics. Are we going to put sanctions on the United Kingdom for meddling in our election and trying to overthrow the president? We should stop Five Eyes Agreement, which is an informal agreement of intelligence between Britain, the United Kingdom, it's 54 Commonwealth nations, uh, and then also Australia, uh, New Zealand, Canada, and us. And what we need to do is sever that. Those are our enemies. And then we need to say to Britain, you are our enemy. Get the heck out of our country. I don't care if you have a tiny speck of of ownership of anything in this country. You don't get any more contracts. Lockheed Martin that needs to close down. Lockheed Martin, bye-bye. Yeah. Uh, uh, BAE, bye-bye. Boeing, bye-bye. All these Circo non-competitive bids, they need to be closed down and we need to put them out for bid. And only American contractors, they can prove they're 100% American, bid on them. If we draw back our forces from all over the world and put them in America, we will have a mind-bogglingly strong military that we can do anything we want anywhere. We can fly drones. We don't need to have bases anywhere. Anywhere. Why do we have any bases anywhere? I'll tell you why we have bases. Because of stupid past agreements, treaties, alliances, and because the CIA is there to protect U.S. corporations. That's the number one reason we have bases and throughout forget, the whole world. they got to protect their opium fields, too. That's what it's all about. It is. And so once we wake up and realize who the enemy are, is, are, <laughs> to the people of the world, and as these globalists then we can face them and stand down or have them stand down f- from, for various ways. Trump has said he wants to completely demilitarize. Get rid of all nuclear bombs. Why would we have any nuclear bombs? Think of that. We have neutron bombs. Why would we need a one that spreads plutonium radiation everywhere 
when we actually have bombs that are much more effective, the mother of all bombs, uh, bunker bombs. We have bombs that have the same explosive power as nuclear bombs. Why would we ever, ever use anything nuclear when you can place it all with thorium, with Galt reactors? I know. Totally retrofit every one of them. All Trump needs to do is put a piece of thorium in his hand and say, this is what's going to rule the world. And it is free energy for everyone because all wars are energy wars. Oil is passe because there's frozen methane to the tune of anywhere between 10,000 to 100,000 times more under the oceans, frozen methane, which is usually about 100% more effective than the petroleum that we use now. All of them know this. Do you hear anyone talking about it? No, it's passe. But they're going to finish those rat lines of money, OPEC and other such rat lines, fracking, all this craziness that they're doing. They don't need any of that. They can literally go to hydrogen. They can go to liquid uh, frozen methane. They can go to all kinds of other methodologies for producing energy. But these are vested interests. And until the vested interests get out of uranium, and that would be the queen, her privy council, and Oh, wait a minute. Uranium one? Yes. Uh, What about Jeff Sessions and uranium one? If he was such a good guy, why was he involved in covering up this stuff that was happening with Hillary and Klan? Three times Jeff Sessions stamped in the committees he was in approval for the CFIUS approval of Uranium One. He was part of the deal. If he didn't get a payoff, I'd be very, very, very surprised. He was a key key person for that going through. And there was no plan with Jeff Sessions. Jeff Sessions was a plant. That's the reason when he came out at first and started being such a Trump supporter, I said, no, no, something's horribly wrong with this. He's a Bushite. This man loves the Bushes, okay? You can't love the Bushes and be in a position of power in Washington and not know the corruption of the Bushes and the Clintons, because when you say Bush, you say Clinton. So, no, Jeff Sessions, no, he, he, he was a traitor. He should have been stopping the people at the border from the first moment. He should have allowed marijuana to be a, a, a state right. He should have stopped the seizure of people and their assets before anyone is even arrested and all the other nonsense he did and go back to what he should have been doing, which was supporting Trump's program, which he never did. You know, people are very happy that Trump is back from overseas and here to watch what's going on with this massive election fraud all over the country. It's just like one race after the other is being reopened now for ballots that have been mysteriously found. The Florida election, Trump tweets, should be called in favor of Rick Scott and Ron DeSantis in that large numbers of new ballots showed up out of nowhere, and many ballots are missing or forged. An honest vote count is no longer possible. Ballots massively infected must go with election night. Well, first off, as we said, you can't capitulate and then uncapitulate. And you're speaking about Gillum capitulating. So anybody capitulating, sorry, it's over. That's what they try to do with ISIS management system. Just a reminder, they try to get you all wrapped up into the media narrative that if you're running and you see those numbers come in, you go ahead and concede the election. And they don't give you a chance to unconcede. They're tricking you. So people, if you are in a race, if your congressperson is in a race and lost it and you think that there was voter fraud going on, do not concede the race. Make the Secretary of State certify every single vote in that district. When John Kerry ran for president, he said he would not give in or concede until every single vote was counted. It didn't take him, no matter how long it took, weeks and weeks and weeks, he conceded that night. Why? Because he knew that it was fake. He knew it was rigged. It's always been rigged and up until the time of Trump. And it was rigged against him, and yet against all odds he won because of White Hats intervening and many other things. Plus, Hillary was just a horrible candidate. So as we look at this now, Anyone who conceded, sorry, you capitulate, you're done. Okay, you're over. We don't need to recount yours except the following. In every place where someone did not capitulate, for instance, Abrams, who had one of the worst losses in U.S. political history, but she wants a recount, let her have her recount. And make sure it's the federal government lawyers there, not Mark Elias from Perkins Coie, the most corrupt lawyer firm in the the world. But federal attorneys, if they work for the Department of Justice, they could all be as corrupt as Jeff Sessions. Uh, Working now, not under Jeff Sessions, but under Matt Whitaker, send down your best U.S. Marshals and arrest everyone who was part of the corruption. Do not recount. 
or during the recount, there should be people going to jail. Brenda Snipes shouldn't be in that office anymore. She should be behind bars. But remember, she applied to, what was it, her sister, her cousin, the the uh, the judge that she just applied to get, uh, to, to have it removed? No, that was Abrams. I mean, Abrams. Yeah, Abrams right. applied to the, her. Right. Her well, sister, sister is a judge that was appointed by Obama. So that she could get what she wanted. You see, that's the kind of thing that goes on. So Snipes, I don't know, go to jail. Do not get out of jail for free. No, no, no get out of jail card. What are you talking about? We have already witnessed so much corruption, it's disgusting. But if a county, Arrest them. If a county or a state cannot certify their elections as being truthful, honest, fair, then their representatives should not be given the opportunity to go and represent that district. Correct. And they can just hold another election. It shouldn't keep the rest of us from going ahead and placing people who were voted in into Congress and into the Senate. But anywhere it's been challenged, fine, take another year if you have to. But until then... You don't get a seat in the House or in the Senate. Correct. Until I don't understand. The next round. This is as simple as that. Broward County shouldn't be holding up Florida, and Florida shouldn't be holding up the rest of us. And it's historic that this has happened, and historically in the same places. It's unacceptable. It's illegal. It's fraud. It's rigging. You were going to tell us something else about Broward County that maybe we didn't know? Well, just first off, let's reject, reject Florida's offerings to our federal government because they do not meet federal standards. Make sure you send U.S. Marshals and attorneys from the honest attorneys from the Department of Justice to go prosecute these people. It doesn't take a genius, folks. It doesn't take a genius. We have witnesses who saw them changing the mail-in ballots. We have her, Snipes, saying, well, we knew that these people wanted to vote, so we went ahead and filled out their ballots for them. What, what, what did she just say? Just take her to jail right there. Right there. That's all she needed Look, to say was that. Here's the bottom line. They were counting on their digital fraud to work for them in this election. And this is the thing that Michael McKibben has pointed out to us. His research team found the real dirt on this man in the middle situation. We posted a lot on it, and I'll have some information in the link that's in the description box below. But the man in the middle didn't work for them in Florida, Ohio, and Georgia. Maybe because some white hat network engineers knew how to protect the cells legally. And so it blew their cover. They expected to win those states. Now what do they do? Especially Broward County. This is where Debbie Wasserman Schultz holds the keys to enormous crimes of people all throughout Congress. They cannot let her not go to Congress and continue to run her rat lines. She's still defending the Democratic National Committee on the two lawsuits against them. And then also multiple uh, investigations from the Federal Elections Commission, uh, all concerning her. They can't not allow her to, to be back in Congress. If she was kicked out, she'd just be a normal person and she couldn't turn around and uh, protect normal. I- Imran. That woman is hardly normal. I mean, if she wasn't a politician. She, she couldn't protect Imran Awan if she wasn't a politician. She couldn't keep the lies going about the Democratic National Committee and what was on that server going. She couldn't keep the... Uh, the election rigging for the 17 primaries against Bernie, which everyone witnessed and no one did anything about. So what we're saying to you is, is we're, certainly we're upset because you're upset too. All good people should be in a state of wrath because when you see horrible wrong, it's supposed to rise up in you as a response coming from love that you wish to stop the evil that you're witnessing. It's not anger, it's wrath. And that wrath needs to strike like lightning upon the criminals who have been doing this in Florida since I can remember, since since I was a child. This has always been, well, we'll see how Florida will mess up the election this time. Will it be George a Baby Bush and hanging chads? Will it be taking it to the Supreme Court so the Supreme Court has to decide what we the people are supposed to be in charge of, which is our free and fair elections? This was not free and it was not fair. And it's obvious. It's a free-for-all down there in Broward County. There you go. And in Broward County, what do we know? That's the FBI headquarters for FBI counterintelligence. Of course, that's where Hogg works out of and his uh, dad, uh, David Hogg. And that's the reason the Parkland shooting was right there. That's the reason the the MAGA bomber uh, literally was right there and was uh, mailing stuff from the very uh, post office where they found huge boxes of uh, ballots that they didn't count then they're invalid. You cannot add a ballot 
after the election is over. I mean, does any, okay, but Mark Elias is going down as a lawyer. He's going to argue every single ballot. Believe it or not, that's what he's down there doing. And the Democrats are paying for it. Every single ballot he's going to argue whether or not it needs to be admitted or not. They've done this before. It's standard operating procedure in Florida. Florida shouldn't even be counted as part of our well, elections. Well, that's what Trump is saying right here. It's no longer possible because the it's so massively uh, infected with fraud. And he's saying, go with election night. So what do you think the response of the Dems are going to be to this very powerful tweet? It's going to be seeing if they can get an easier way for an illegal alien to get whatever ID is needed in more than just sanctuary states so they can vote. That's what they're working on right now. Pelosi right now is is conniving and planning new immigration policies that will simply solidify the illegal activities and executive orders of Obama, which basically um, told Homeland Security and ICE to not do their job. Well, I'm very upset with Mike Pence. He was given the task by Trump long before the elections to look into the election fraud and rigging, and he set up a committee, and then he got all (laughs) on us and wigged out of that and didn't do a darn thing. And we, the people, handed him a writ of mandamus that showed the election fraud that we see out here, and still nothing from Mike Pence. Well, you see, when you choose your vice president, you have to choose it politically, period. Uh, I see him give a speech here and there, but... I see a whole lot of nothing happening from his office. He's a zero. Okay, so why was a zero investigating election fraud? Well, now look, it was it was in fact a bipartisan committee for election ethics. Well, and- when you say bipartisan, we have to remember that that doesn't really have a meaning to us because they could all be globalist puppets. Oh, I know. And look what and so happened. of course they don't want you to look at uh, election fraud. Well, well then who did. is Mike Pence that he didn't press ahead well, to he, insist that we find out where the election fraud is coming from? I'm saying the point man here, people, is Mike Pence. Wait, wait. Mike Pence's investigation was for the previous election. Well, and what did he find? One. Did he find man in the middle? We certainly showed the information. What did he show out of this? Well, here's what happened. The recount, Jill Stein and Hillary's demand for a recount after the third state and it was Michigan, and it was Detroit, that was so corrupt for the Democrats that that Hillary immediately canceled the recount, which you can't actually do. Uh, But anyway, they did it. So they found out that uh, two of the three states they looked at were completely rigged, and they were rigged for the Democrats, so they stopped it. So then there was a committee appointed, a bipartisan committee. And you're right, uh, what I don't know a good name for him. Weak Mike Pence. He's very weak. Yellow Zero. belly globalist pig. I he is I, not standing up for we the people and the patriot movement. He's not going to stand up for nothing. Just look at his history. Look at him. He's a nothing. He was chosen because he's a nothing. So, because if you knock out Trump and you get him as a president, you don't even have a president. You have nothing. Well, no, you have a globalist puppet. Uh, with some morality, and that's the problem. Maybe, maybe not. If you cannot stand up for your country... Hey, he's the best that Trump had. Okay, he may be the best... Name a better running mate. I'm just calling it out because I'm tired of people not calling out Mike Pence for his do-nothingness in regard to election fraud. And what's this about... He didn't do nothing. Here's what happened. What, What did he do? He started a bipartisan committee which asked all 50 states to send in their results. Only 17 agreed to do so. They considered subpoenaing them. They were told that was illegal. Well, because he was a pussy and his committee was a soy boy committee of partisan do-nothings, globalist pigs, whatever you want to call them, they got back the results. And from 17 states, here's the results now, folks. In 2016, 3.5 to 5 million votes were faked. They were either dead Double votes in states, double votes in a state, or illegal aliens. And by the way, two million of them were immediately done by simply a 10-second cross-check with the voter lists in California compared against those who are immigrants that we know of, which is 22 million in this country. So we know that two million votes from the... Just the cities inside of California, because there's some some cities sent in results and some whole states sent in results, but just inside of California alone, 2 million fake votes. Now, 3.5 
to five in the 17 states. So they said the election was rigged. I'm sorry. It was absolutely definitively proven. And then what happened? Then Harvard and all the Ivy League colleges did the same thing, and they did the analysis, and they came up with higher numbers, between five to seven million fake votes. Now that's done by our best institutions, and nothing was done. And so, yes, Mike Pence, after that, why didn't you do something? Why? Because you can't stop the illegal alien votes because of the sanctuary cities and sanctuary states. The dead votes? No, this has gone to the Supreme Court. It's gone to Federal Courts Appeal. It's been in the courts continuously since 2015, continuously, nonstop. We're not only gerrymandering in Pennsylvania and in other states that was done by Eric Holder, went before the court and was found to be illegal, but also they allow felons to vote. They allow illegals to vote. They allow... Um, they don't check their roles, and so they say that's uh, unconstitutional to check the roles for who's dead and who's not. They don't check even the uh, standard statistics, logistics, demographics that they have uh, from the DM, from the Department of Motor Vehicles. They don't do any of this. If they did that, they would probably find many, 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 many more votes fake. If 17 nation, 17 states said, let's just use the conservative numbers, four million. Well, then there's 15 million illegal votes each year. I mean, each time there's a, there's a vote. So why can't we stop that? Because the Democrats will not allow immigration policy to be written. They will not allow voter policy to be written. They will not allow election campaign fraud uh, legislation to be written. Because why? They're all involved in it. Every single person who votes as a PAC in the Congress or the Senate gets money from their leadership, which comes from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, which comes from China. That is Chinese money. That is Israeli money. That is Russian money. That is foreign money coming into our elections. And the largest amount comes to the U.S. Chamber of Commerce. Completely illegal, completely allowed. There are actually literally, Stephen Halper, the man who is the British spy, who was setting up Papadopoulos, Sam Clovis, and anybody else he could set up. And he was the guy who paid a million dollars for meddling in the election. He's a Brit and an American. Dual citizenship. When you look at that type of corruption and it's known, how is Trump supposed to stop that? He'd have to start from scratch. So what he did was this. He said he knew that he was going to lose the House. I mean, statistically, that's just a fact. He figured that he'd get no new senators. And so if he even gets one new senator, that's a huge victory for him. This is just the way that it goes in politics, folks. Because why? They're determined ahead of time. If you think that you have elected a president since the time of Jimmy Carter, you are incorrect. You had nothing to do with it. Your vote didn't mean anything. And so that's the sad, sad news. So Trump had to allow them to play their game out, to even send Lord Nick Clegg to take over Facebook blatantly to say free speech. No, we're not going to do it anymore. For the Google and U.S. Uh, uh, digital service to continue, it's continued. He stopped the Global Engagement Center. He stopped Cambridge Analytica. He stopped Strategic Communications Laboratory. Uh, Circo is going down. So, so many of the things that are behind this are going down. And when sanctuary cities go down and when we actually get a border wall and when we have immigration policy, then we'll be able to have a clean vote. But until then, until you have the fact that you should have to show your natural, when you get a job, do you not have to prove that you're an American citizen? Of course you do, if it's any job of any substantial nature. You have to show your immigration a naturalization card, or you, know, you have to have the number. But, but you know, here's the thing. They're all concerned about this uh, Civil War stuff that uh, blacks and minorities won't get their vote if they can't show ID. So they always pull us back into this 
this post-Civil War period and the wrongs that were done there as though they were going to happen today. And it's the same kind of thing with fractional voting. I mean, what they've done is they've said that we're like three-fifths of a person. Remember then? Back then, a, a slave could vote when they were freed, but their vote only counted three-fifths of a vote. And so by fractionalizing our votes in this way, they've made all of us citizens less than a person. Absolutely. You're a number to be manipulated, and that number is manipulated through a, a software called Optech, which right. was developed so by Jimmy Carter. So if they're so concerned about righting the wrongs of the Civil War, why is it that they're going back to fractional voting where our votes don't count as a whole vote? After the Civil War, the Democrats literally took Republicans who were elected in the South, African Americans, took them out and shot them. All of them. This happened repeatedly. People don't want to talk about the Democratic murders during Reconstruction. Okay, the last tweet is, The prospect of presidential harassment by the Dems is causing the stock market big headaches. If they, well, this was predicted, that if they take the House, that the stock market will crash. Here's the deal. It didn't crash. And remember, they're waiting for the crash. The crash was all set up for Hillary. Literally, Hillary wouldn't have been president two months until the stock market would have crashed. She would have then turned around and used that distraction to bomb Damascus and start Armageddon. And then that would have started continuous wars where everybody's so confused that all the people who gave money to her, 125 nations donated illegally, according to the emolument clause, to Hillary Clinton when she was the Secretary of State so that she would give them weapons through what the USAID, USAID, Trump is ending USAID. It's corrupt. It's nothing more than the Secretary of State having the power to spend $86 billion a year on any nation that the Secretary of State decides is her friend or his friend. And so that, so when John Kerry came in, he basically did that with Iran. He did it with every nation. And his son came in and, and cleaned up afterwards, Christopher Hines, and got a deal in every nation that he went and he manipulated with USAID. And USAID goes to our enemies, and it goes for weapons. And so what we're talking about here is astounding corruption. And when the stock market was supposed to crash, it was going to be fine because the whole world was going to go to war, and the military-industrial complex was going to make money hand over fist because they sell weapons to both sides. And so Hillary, that's her game. That's always been her game. She's China's girl. She's a little China doll. She's moved to Shanghai. Her, her major uh, operations move into Shanghai, but she was always shanghai from the moment that she took the position on the Walmart board uh, and basically a paid position and sold America out to China, though China is the biggest criminal on the face of the earth and our worst enemy. So are we getting a little um, a pause for concern when Trump tweets out that the stock market it might become a big headache? He is basically saying, okay, you want to manipulate me this way? I'm going to take over the Fed. Go ahead. I'll accelerate my program. So if you, Pelosi, want to crash the market, which you do, and you want to increase taxes on everyone, which you do, you want to knock down all the walls so that chaos, drugs, murders, human trafficking can come across our borders, which you do, it will have an effect, and you will not be popular. And you Dems... Go ahead. I'm giving you two years to give your best shot, and everybody's going to be watching. All your best shots are going to fail, and it's going to make you to be idiots. Go ahead. Try to impeach me. You can't. Go ahead. Try the emolument clause on me. It won't. I'll just kick it back to you and say, look at Hillary. Go ahead. Try to get my taxes. They, they don't even exist. They don't exist. What they want doesn't even exist. So they can try everything they want, and all they're going to do is get the rest of the dimtards who still voted for those idiots to realize that they're not Americans. They want nothing but to steal money from every American, to put illegal aliens above citizens, to promote war, and basically total chaos in the George Soros program. And that's going to be beautiful because then in 2020, they are going to lose massively. Trump will be reelected. And for once, he'll have a major majority in both houses and MAGA will never end. He'll have to create a new uh, party. Uh, again, Mr. President, I suggest that you call it the Triumph Party since your name is in Triumph. So 